Hi, I'm Bakul Damle, Business Director at Maxim Integrated. As many design engineers are focusing on inventing the next big thing, they are more likely to use lithium-ion batteries for making these devices portable or have backup power. Many of these devices use integrated circuits called fuel gauges that tell them the state of the battery so that they can maximize the runtime without abrupt shutdown. Many of the traditional fuel gauges have required extensive characterization in the lab to produce the most accurate results. And much of that process is very time consuming and takes a lot of effort. But here at Maxim, we have come out with the latest generation of fuel gauges that eliminate the characterization process and make the design cycle very simple. Here to discuss with me the latest fuel gauges, I have Jason Wortham, the inventor of model gauge. So Jason, can you tell me about the latest fuel gauges from Maxim? Sure. So our most recent technology, model gauge M5EZ, is something that we think is going to reduce the, the burden significantly for using a fuel gauge in your application. Uh, basically, we've attacked the, the battery diversity problem and we've made our fuel gauge able to work without the traditional characterization efforts required, which is usually, you know, 100, 200 hours of battery data with special instrumentation, stuff like that. So what we have here is the Max 17201 EV kit. Uh, it's connected to a battery, uh, just a kind of random uh, 18650 cell that I had in the lab. Uh, ICR 18650-28A. So it's a 2.8 amp hour cell and we have two in parallel. Uh, there's a few flavors of this product, 17201, 17205, 17211, and 215. Um, anyway, they all support M5EZ. On the screen here, I have the EVKit GUI, which shows a bunch of information going on inside of the chip right now. Uh, it thinks the battery is 1500 milliamp hours because it's not been configured yet. Uh, we have, we don't, we're not going to use any special characterization information on this battery. We're just going to run it with uh, EZ, which really is kind of a blind performance that we expect will still deliver a good performance despite no characterization because of the robust algorithm inside the chip. So in order to use that, that EZ algorithm, we run the config wizard. It'll ask us a bunch of questions, kind of walk you through it. Uh, start with existing non-volatile memory. Well, that's what, not what we want to do. We want to start with the factory default information. Uh, you could choose not to change the model and then you're not going to be doing too much, but we want to put the M5EZ model in there. And since I know these are 2800 milliamp hours from the cell data sheet, for example, anytime you're in a project, you probably know the capacity of your cell. You have a data sheet and you can just put in the label capacity. It doesn't have to be the specific capacity of that cell, which varies. Uh, just the label capacity is fine. Uh, so 2800 milliamp hours times two is 5600, because it's two parallel, 5600 milliamp hours. And you can choose an empty voltage target, which the fuel gauge will aim for. We choose 3.3, is a pretty, it's probably the most common target actually, for a single cell application. And if you have higher than 4.2 volt charging, you can check this box. So like 4.3, 4.35, 4.4 volt lithium batteries, they're all supported you just check that box. If you're doing 4.2 charging, don't check the box. So we go next. The product family supports a number of schematics. There's four schematic types here. Uh, the single cell is only on the left, and the, then there's this one with balancing is the second schematic, and there's a higher cell count that doesn't support balancing uh, up to four series, and then there's a much higher cell count uh, schematic that supports you know, 15, 20, 30 cells in series, for like an e-bike or a, you know, a semi kind of automotive application or something. Uh, just check which kind. If, if I check single cell, this number down here is stuck at one. But if I have multi-cell, I can make it two or three. And uh, this multi-cell will do uh, two to four. And this one will do sort of whatever. And uh, anyway, we, the part that we have is 17201, which is only single cell. So for this example, we're going to select single cell and then go next. Uh, there's some other things that you can configure. Uh, these are most likely not used in most applications. And uh, you might type in your sense resistor if it's different than 10 milliohm. We put a 10 milliohm default there. And there's also the, you can see on the EV kit, there's a, there's a uh, R15 is the sense resistor. It is 10 milliohm. 
there's this R17, which is in parallel with it, which is a PC board metal trace, kind of a, an example for another trick that this chip can do is, is fuel gauging with PC board metal, which is copper, which has a, a lousy temperature coefficient, yet we can still manage it because we have this uh, temperature compensation for copper. The 0.4% per degree Celsius is copper. So anyway, we're using the sense resistor for now, so we'll choose that. And there's a calibration option, which you almost always don't need to do. Uh, our part will compensate for, for error in the current sense. But if you want very accurate current sense, besides for fuel gauging, you can make the, the current sense more accurate with this calibration. But it's really not necessary. Uh, you have die temperature, a thermistor, or two thermistors, or you can choose any combination of these things. Uh, if you have, say, one thermistor on and, and the die temperature, you can say fuel gauging comes from the die temperature or from the thermistor. And uh, so if we choose the thermistor, and we have to say what kind of thermistor, and this is a very common one, and it'll choose the coefficients over here, which translate that into degrees Celsius. Um, you can find more information on that in the data sheet. Okay. Uh, there's a number of alerts in our part which can reduce the, the need to pull the part to find out, you know, is the percentage changed, is the voltage changed, anything you want to know. You can set a voltage, current, temperature, state of charge alert, all these things. And uh, it's configured there. The defaults are often okay depending on your application. And uh, there's a feature called age forecasting. You can read details in the data sheet, but it's for understanding if the battery is aging faster than expected and how long this particular battery for this particular user, it's going to last. So it does an estimate for that. And there's also battery life logging, which tells you, you know, how, uh, if, you, if you had a battery that's been deployed for two or three years and you, you get it back from the field and you want to do like an autopsy, say, what happened on this battery? Well, there's a number of log events uh, in the course of those years that you'll be able to see what voltage, current, and temperature did it experience and how many cycles, et cetera, how much use did it get. So that's kind of good autopsy information. And uh, this is the non-volatile memory table. It shows you in gray the things that are, are actually getting configured. The things not in gray are not, not that important here. And uh, a lot of the non-volatile memory is, is often free for your application for other kinds of information, like you can put your brand or your lot number or something different in there. Uh, the green things are the things that it's configuring with EZ. And uh, to support the easy config. And here we get the final step. You now get to decide what to do with the resulting configuration. You can write it to RAM only. It won't actually execute the configuration. You can write it to RAM and restart so it does execute the configuration, but it's temporary so if you ever lose power, you've, you've forgotten it. So it's really just for experimental purposes in the lab. You wouldn't uh, deploy with this setting. But this final one will burn the part and uh, uh, then it will, it will be able to survive any kind of reset and it'll keep its configuration. It says here you only have six burns left. Uh, you start with seven, uh, you can burn it seven times. So here it gives you a warning, you only have six left. Are you sure you wanna do it? And we'll say, sure, why not? Continue and uh, you see this 1500 here changed, boom, to 5600 milliamp hours, uh, corresponding with the change in the the size of the battery. So you have the percentage of the battery, you can charge or discharge it, watch these things change. You could, uh, you know, try discharging to 3.3 volts under whatever load or temperature and see, see how it performs. We expect that it'll perform pretty decent under most situations. Okay, so this configuration process looks very simple, Jason, but how about the accuracy? After all, our designers want fuel gauges they can believe in. Sure, of course. So. It's quite remarkable that we're able to achieve uh, accuracy in spite of not having the characterization information that's traditionally always required in a fuel gauge. And the way we achieved it, we, we've done 2,000 batteries in the last, I don't know, five or six years, something. And uh, we have all this characterization information. So we took a batch of 300 of these batteries. Every one of them was you know, 10 or 15 different uh, uh, cycles at different conditions. And uh, it's about 150, 200 hours of data per battery, we ran the whole batch 
uh, on this blind configuration where we only use the label capacity and no characterization information. So we're running the M5EZ the same way as I've guided you here. And uh, we do, do a histogram of the performance of all of those discharges. Uh, most of the discharges, 97%, uh, deliver within 3% accuracy. So we really are able to do this performance blind without the traditional tedium of characterization and, and all of that burden. Right, so the error is less than 3% uh, at most in majority of the cases, it looks like. That, that's outstanding, Jason. So besides the collateral, uh, the evaluation kit software, uh, what other design help can you provide the engineers? So on our website, there's the data sheet, which is extensive. It describes all the registers in the part and some various application information. Uh, there's also the EV kit hardware that you see here, as well as the EV kit GUI you saw. And there's a data sheet behind the EV kit, so you can get an example layout. There's Gerber files available for that layout if you want to copy some of that. Uh, there's also a number of app notes which describe some specific applications. One of the most interesting or important of the app notes is the implementation guide which describes how your software might want to interact with our chip, how to build a, uh, like in an Android environment or something, how to build your, your software. Uh, there's also a Linux and Android uh, driver available for this product. All right, that's very good, Jason. I think the process of designing in these fuel gauges seems to be quite straightforward. So for more information about the Maxim fuel gauges, please go to our website, maximintegrated.com, and go to the Model Gauge M5EZ webpage. Thank you for watching.